Hey, it's Carl, and tonight I'm redoing another one of my store kind of display tanks. They're display tanks, but I do sell out of them. They're just kind of kind of tanks where I put some of my project fish that I don't really want to sell that bad right away. So like you saw in a previous video when I redid this tank, it's time to redo this one. And it had gotten to be quite a disaster. It was a pretty ugly tank. Fish were healthy, I had my, my plecos in there and they were doing all fine. It was just gotten pretty ugly. So I'm going to redo this tank and I'm going to build it around my leopard frog plecos. A few months ago I got a really nice group of leopard frog plecos and they've just kind of been in that ugly tank doing nothing, right? But they're one of my favorite plecos and I really, really like them. So I'm going to set up this tank kind of tailored for them. So right now I have seven of these little guys and I really, really love these plecos. They don't get real huge, lots of color, all their customer favorite. Everyone sees them, they really, really love them. So I'm hoping to grow out a few, maybe get a breeding colony or a breeding trio or something going on. I know I'm not going to be able to keep all seven in that tank forever, but uh, I'm going to get them set up in there and just see how they do. So I want to build this tank all around them. So I'm not likely going to do a lot of planted plants. I do want to have some plants in it. So it's going to be rock and wood. I have a couple little pleco caves I'm going to try and build into the, the hardscape so they're not too obvious but I give them a nice little cave. I'm sure they'll find other little nooks and crannies to swim around in. And then I'm going to plant it with mostly epiphyte plants. Plants that don't need to be rooted because I think they're just going to dig up anything I really put in the soil. I might try a few just to see how it goes but I suspect they're just going to dig it up. And so I'm going to stick with the bigger epiphytes. Anubias, Java ferns, Bulbitis, things like that that are pretty tough and rugged can handle some abuse but that don't have to be rooted in the sand because I just don't think they'll stay there very long. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the sand in there. Again, I'm going to go with a single layer of sand. I'm not going to do any underneath uh, like fertilizing substrates or anything like that. I'm going to use the Seachem fluorite, which I've never actually used before, but the fluorite black sand. So it should be good to put some nutrients in the water for the plants. But again, if these plecos start digging and rooting around in the sand, they're not going to dig up the bottom layers and make it look all ugly. It'll just be a single layer of sand, and if they move it around, I don't care. They, they can move it around all they want. It's not going to mess it up. So I'm going to get that sand in there now, and then we'll start to build it from there. So that fluorite sand's a lot lighter than I thought. While I was putting it in there, it's, just, it's really, really light, like a volcanic kind of stone. So it's not as heavy as a lot of normal sand. So I think these fish are going to move it around quite a bit. But I've got it all down in place now, and now I'm going to start with some hardscape. And I've got some cereal stone and some bogwood. The bogwood I've had soaking for a few days now, so or actually for a week now. So it's ready. It's already waterlogged and sinking pretty good. Cereal stone, I think will look really good on that black sand. And I have a couple of these little pleco caves. You can see like that and I'm going to try and integrate them into the hardscape somehow so they're not too obvious they're kind of square and not natural looking so I'm going to try and incorporate them where I can see into them without them being super obvious because I just want to I don't want them to really stand out I want them to kind of blend in with the rest of the hardscape but yeah the color is good I think it'll work pretty good to blend in there so again I'm going to get this stone and wood kind of arranged I'm just winging it I have the pieces kind of picked out but how they're going to be arranged I don't know I'm going to play around with it and then I'll show you what I come up with There, I really kind of like that. I think it's gonna blend in pretty good. You can see where the cave is in there. But I think by the time I put some plants in the side, maybe a few more little chunks of rock, it'll kind of blend in pretty good. And then I'll still be able to see in it because I want to be able to see what's going on, see if there's eggs, see how the fish are doing. So I want to be able to look in it without it being too obvious. And I think that'll work. I really like how this rock kind of curves around the front of it a little bit. So from this angle, it's a lot less noticeable. All right, well, I really like that. I actually broke that little piece in the middle and just separated the two pieces over there. So I brought this rock forward, so it kind of covers the front of that cave a little bit more. So now it's really quite hard to see it. And then I broke that wood in half, so I have two pieces. Now I am gonna glue it down just to make sure it stays put. So to glue this wood onto the rock, I'm gonna use a little ball of paper towel and some super glue gel. This is the Ista plant glue. This is the same glue I, I used to glue plants onto rock. But I'm just gonna saturate this little ball of paper towel in the, the super glue and then just stick the two together. That'll make it stick real well without being super permanent. I can scrape it off pretty easy later on. So just gonna get that done. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna start working on this corner here. So 
So there's the other corner. I'm not 100% sure that's the finished product yet. I like this big Archie rock here. I'm not sure what to do there and I'm not sure if plants are going to be enough to hide it or not. I think I could probably stuff some plants in here and up there. I think, I think I can make it work but we'll go with that. I do have one piece of wood. I have a nice center piece of wood I'm going to put in there now and then I think we can probably fill it up and have a look at how that looks. I really like this piece of wood. This is a great piece of wood. It's got just tons of character. I'm going to get it right down in there. Put some sand on it. Now because this one's already waterlogged, I really don't need to do much to it. It should stay put. But it's going to be great to stick some plants in all these little cracks and crevices. Be able to put lots of plants in there. There. Well, there's the hardscape. I'm loving this tank. This looks better than I imagined when I started. I had an idea what I wanted to do, but until you put it all together, you really don't know. And again, I can, this is going to look better once it's planted. But yeah, it's kind of got that Mordor spiky rock look. I really like that. This is great. So I'm going to get the sand smoothed out and we'll get it filled up. Probably have to fill it a few times to get it nice and clear. We'll get the filter going and then I'm going to plant it after the fact. Well, I am super excited with how this turned out. You know, you, you start with a bunch of pieces that you think look cool and you start messing around and putting them together and you really don't know how it's gonna look until you get it together and I'm super happy with how this turned out. These pieces of rock, they just fit in perfect. It looks great with the wood. These pieces of wood, these roots are really, really awesome. They just have great character, great shape. Sauron, Mordor kind of look. It's gonna get the filter now. I'm just gonna use the same filter that I took out. This is a Fluval U2 and uh, I just like these filters, they're nice, they sit inside, they don't take up a lot of space, I don't have to worry about things. With, with my setup, it's hard to access things from behind, so I want something I can get at right inside the tank. So these Fluval U internals, they work really, really great. So it's fully cycled already, I can just pop it back in, plug it in, and away we go, and I can have fish in there in no time. So, so I'm gonna get that in, get it on, get the heater running, get it warmed up, let it clear up for a little bit, and then we'll get the fish in their new home. So. All right, filter's running. There's some good current in there now. It's really moving the water around. And these fish really like current. They come from river systems. They like moving water. And it, now it's not crazy current, but I think it'll give the plants nice movement, make them feel comfortable and at home. This is a Fluval M series heater. I really like these heaters. They're pretty accurate. They're not super expensive. And uh, they do a good job of maintaining that temperature. And these plecos, they do like it pretty warm. Probably, you know, 26, 28, even 30 degrees, which is what, 78 to, 84, 86 maybe Fahrenheit, so pretty warm anyways, they like the warm and you want something that's going to be accurate and maintain it and these fish aren't cheap so you want something that's going to be a good quality heater that'll last and, and be super accurate. So these heaters have been a workhorse for me over the years and I'm going to stick with them. So. All right, well it's been running for 24 hours now. You can see it's cleared up quite a bit. It's crystal clear now so it's looking really good. Temperature's up where we need it so I'm going to get planted. So I'll just show you the plants now I got to pick from and I'm going to go with again mostly epiphytes because I think they're going to root around in the sand and dig stuff up. So I cleaned up some plants. I've got some regular java fern. Uh, this is the, the narrow leaf and this is regular java fern. Um, Bulbitis. I'm excited for this one. I really like this plant. It's a little bit darker green, really fun texture in the leaves. Good shape to it. I think those are going to be good. So this is Blixa japonica, and I wasn't going to put anything in the sand itself. These are rooting plants, where the others are the epiphytes that don't have to root. But these guys, you, I will have to root them. The, the tissue culture was going bad, so you can see some of those dark leaves and stuff. So I cleaned them up the best I can, and so I'm going to try them. If they get wrecked, they get wrecked. No biggie. And then Bucephalandra ketagang. I really, really like this one. That's one full pot of little ones. I, there was one pot that wasn't as nice as the rest, so I grabbed it out. But yeah, really nice dark crinkly leaves with the red stems. It's probably, that's my favorite abuse of philander for sure. So I'm going to give that a try. Right, got just the place for that. All right, well that's as planted as it's gonna be for now. 
and I just want to see how these fish react and how what they do to the actual plants before I do much more so I did put in a few patches of Blixia japonica that is a rooted plant and I really don't know how it's gonna do if they'll dig it up or what they'll do with it but it's there for now I put in a couple little Anubias that's Anubias gracilis I just really love that plant I just think I just like those long stems and those smaller leaves I think it's a good looking Anubias so I just put one pot split it into two uh, java fern this is java fern narrow and i just jammed it in the cracks in the wood up there there's three bunches of it a little bit of bucephalandra ketagang again it's my favorite bucephalandra i just think it's great and it adds a different color to the mix so yeah that's cave area number one my center wood piece again we got the little rock with the gracilis just to add some to take away the symmetry of it but yeah, that piece of wood, that's really awesome with everything sticking up. And this is Bulbitis. Bulbitis, another awesome epiphyte plant. It should grow right up to the top there. And there's another little Bucephalandra, the other cave, and some more Java fern. I didn't get too crazy on this side, just the Java ferns and the one Bulbitis. And there's some Blixia down there, and then the cave. So yeah, I'm really liking this. I'm pretty excited. The fish are not in there yet, and I'm a little afraid that Seachem fluorite sand is a lot lighter than I would have thought. It's, it must be very volcanic because it's very, very lightweight and very dusty. And I'm sure once these fish get in here, they're going to kind of stir it all up. So my filter is going to be working overtime to get the dust out. But I think over a few days or a week, that will settle down. Once we get all the dust into the filter, I think it'll, uh, it'll clear up and look really good. But so far, so good. Let's introduce some fish. Well, this is the exciting part. I get to actually put my fish in. So this is my little group of leopard frog plecos. There's seven of them in there. Um, a mix of wild caught and captive rays. So I really like that when we get a, kind of a mix like that. Um, lots of couple different sizes in there. So I'm really hoping for some males and females. And I realize this tank is not big enough to house them as full size adults, but I will call them out, not call them out. I will thin them out and I'll sell off the extras when, uh, as they grow up. And I hope to get a couple pairs out of this batch and I think a couple pairs, or at least that pair, could live comfortably in this tank. Well, these guys are looking awesome in the tank. I'm loving this tank. I think it looks so good. These plecos, they stand out so nice on that black sand and those dark rocks. Their striping and the contrast is just awesome. They look great really happy with the plants I think they're gonna fill in quite nicely they've got some growing to do obviously but I think they're gonna fill in quite nicely so yeah really really like this tank so I'll definitely do an update maybe six or eight weeks down the road I'll give you an update to just see how the fish are doing how the tanks looking how the plants are growing if they've destroyed the tank if they're stirring up all the dust all the time we'll, we'll see what happens like it's an experiment for me too so I will definitely update you on that see how it's doing pretty sure it's gonna be okay I think it might get dusty for a week or two and then it'll clear up and it'll be fine so I'm just gonna end it with some b-roll of the tank and the fish, get you some details of the tank. Really hope you enjoyed this build video. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope I'll see you in the next one.